Exercise 5.3. In this exercise, we have a 3 millimeter panel of aluminum alloy, which is covering both sides by an epoxy coating. This epoxy has to be cured at a given temperature of TC of 150 Celsius for at least five minutes. The curing operation has two steps. One, the heating part, and then a cooling part. The heating has a air temperature of 175 Celsius with a given convection coefficient. And then we have a cooling with a temperature of the air at 25 Celsius and a given convection coefficient. We also have that the heating portion of the process is conducted over an interval time TE, which has to be at least 300 minutes above the curing time. So it's TE is equal to TC plus 300. The coating has a emissivity of 0.8. The temperature of the, the oven is 175 and the chamber is 25. The panel is initially placed in the oven at a temperature of 25 Celsius and it needs to be removed when it's safe to touch at 37 Celsius. The goal of this problem is to find out what is the total time that has elapsed during the two uh, step process. We consider this uh, to be a unsteady problem. It has two parts, as we said before, the heating and the cooling. We are going to assume that the temperature inside of the aluminum is constant. We're going to neglect the thermal resistance between the epoxy and the aluminum, and we are going to take all the properties to be constant. The first step in the analysis is to evaluate whether or not we can use the lump capacity method by evaluating the value of the I. So we have to do it in both of the processes, the heating and the cooling. So we're gonna say that the BO number for the heating is going to be equal to HO, the critical length, divided by K. The critical length for a wall panel is simply the thickness. For the heating process, the BO number is equal to 3.4 times 10 to the negative four, which means that we could use the LCN method and we're going to do the same process for the cooling. So we're going to use HC, the critical length, and K. For this case, the BO number is equal to 8.5 times 10 to the negative 5. So once again, we could use the LCN method. The next step in the analysis is to evaluate whether or not we will use radiation in this problem. The way to do it is to evaluate the value of HR and compare it with the value of H, radiation against convection. So since we have two processes, we have to evaluate the heating um, HR and the cooling HR. The way that we're gonna evaluate HR is by using the definition of epsilon, sigma, the temperature, whether it's cooling or heating, minus the T surrounding at each one of the conditions. Once again, the temperature that it has plus the temperature of the surroundings at the particular conditions. If we enter the information for each one of the case, we're going to find that the value of HR for the heating part is going to be equal to 15 watts M, okay? And we find that the value of HR for the cooling process is going to be equal to 8. 8 watt meter square Kelvin. If we compare this with the values of H that we have for each one of the processes, we know that the value of H for the heating process is going to be equal to 40, and the value of the cooling is going to be equal to 10. Notice that, the, notice that the order of magnitude between the radiation and the convection are almost one to one. Therefore, we cannot neglect radiation. Since we have a both radiation and convection, we can represent equation 515 as follows. Negative H T minus T infinity plus epsilon sigma t to the fourth minus t surrounding to the fourth 
and that is going to be equal to density volume C divided by the cross-sectional area of D T D. In this case, we know that the volume is going to be twice the length times the area, and the surface area is simply going to be twice A. If we substitute it into this equation, we're going to find that it's going to be minus H minus T minus T infinity plus epsilon sigma T to the fourth minus T surrounding to the fourth. And that is going to be equal to rho uh, LC dt dt. Since we're looking for a time, and this is a complicated function that has to the first degree and to the fourth degree, we're going to use a numerical uh, solution. We're going to use delta t to be equal to dt, and we're going to use delta temperature to be t new minus t old. Therefore, we could represent this equation as t new as equal to t old minus h um, t minus t infinity plus epsilon sigma t to the fourth minus t surrounding to the fourth one over rho lc times delta t we are going to see the solution of this problem using MATLAB the solution for this problem is basically the same as the one that we have for problem uh, for example 5.1 the only difference is that we have to keep track of the vectors in order to plot them at the end. In the previous problem, we simply have a value of t, t old and t new, but it got overwritten every time, so the memory didn't keep the track of these values or the time. We set it up the same way, we set up all the constants that we have. Our goal for the heating part is to reach 150 Celsius. Once again, we convert into Kelvin by adding 273 we have a delta t of 0.5 and then we start with a initial time of zero notice that the initial position so since it's a vector this is how we address vectors t parenthesis one so that means that is the first element in the vector t the first element of for t new is going to be 25 since that's the initial value that we would like to start since we already set up the values for the first iteration the iteration is going to start at 2. Then we're going to set it up um, this, the while loop exactly in the same way. We have t new and the goal. Notice that in the equation, instead of setting up t new and t old, we have t new at the current iteration, and so that's the present one, and t old is going to be represented as t new in the previous iteration. Now, notice that we have t iteration minus 1. That means that is the previous value available so it's basically the previous position in the vector we do the update of the time in the same way we simply it, uh, do the time the previous iteration plus the change of time delta t and then we update the iterations by one notice that the difference it, the time gets improved by delta t however the iterations are always increased by one to find the critical time, we simply have the time of the previous iteration, exactly the same thing as example uh, 5.1. We update it here, so we need to remove that update in order to give us the correct result. When we plot, we plot it in terms of Celsius, therefore we remove 273 for every value of T new. We run this section, notice that for the heating part, the temperature increases until we reach 150 from a standard value of 25, and it takes about 122 uh, seconds. So notice that the actual value is 123. If we do the cooling process, the process is basically the same. We set it up exactly in the same way. The difference is going to be how we start the time. The time for the cooling, I start with the critical time that I obtained for the heating plus 300, since that's the required elapsing time for the curing process. Then we start the same thing with the first uh, 
position for this new vector notice that i have a teeny new c for coolant and the same thing for tc for coolant instead of t the process of how we set up the while loop is exactly the same the updates are done exactly the same the only difference is the name of the variables we de determine the value of t critical which basically is going to be the final time after both uh, heating and cooling have taken place we run this process and we're going to see that T critical is about 973 seconds. So that, that means that that's the amount of time that it took for the whole process to take place. The plot for this part is going to give us uh, this, which shows that what we have is that we have a heating process that takes place, and then we have a cooling process that takes place. Notice that we have a gap that takes place over here, and that's in between the 300 seconds of curing time that is required to have. So at this moment, it will have to be some type of interpolation that has to take place over here in order to find the behavior of the temperature within these two points. Please make sure that you go back and try to do this problem. Understand the, the different steps that you are going to have in the MATLAB uh, program and be ready to solve this problem on your own.